Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Doesn't work. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Pijana Bala Bha Girivaradhari Jai Gopijana Bala Bha Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa Buddha Charja Ashto Tarhuta Sri Sri Madhat Divine Grace Srila A C Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai. Iskan BBT founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Buddha Charja Ashto Tarhuta Sri Sri Madhat Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Kijai. Ananda Koti Vaishnavindi Kijai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thako Kijai. Kuntarad Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to the Assembled Devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Garanga. Narayanam Namaskritya. Narangchayva Narottamam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tatojai Madhiri Eid Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Prayesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil. And loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Okay. Give me a second here. Sorry, I forgot some home. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om 
On this 14th day of July, 2021, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Canal 5, The Creative Impetus, Chapter 1, The Activities of Maharaj Priyavrata. Text 15. Isha Bisrishtam He Abarundmahe Anga Dukkam, Sukham, Va, Guna, Karma Sangat, Astaya, Tatad, Yad, Ayunkta, Natash, Chakshushmatandha, Ivaniyamana, Ishabhisrishtam Yavarundmahenga, Dukkam sukham va guna karma sangat. Astaya tattan yada yungta natash. Chakshushmatandha ivaniya manaha. Ishabhisrishtam yavarundhamahegdang. Yavarundhamahenga. Dukkam sukham va guna karma sangat. Astaya tattan yada yungta natash. Chakshushmatanda ivaniya mana. Go ahead. Ishabhasrishtam yavarundmahenga. Dukkang sukham va guna karma sanghat. Astaya tattad yada yungta natash. Chakshus matandha ibaniya manaha. Ishabhisrishtam yavarund mehenga. Dukkam sukham va guna karma sangat. Astaya tattan yada yungta natash. Chakshus matanda ibaniya manaha. Ishabhisrishtam yavadun mehinga. Dukkam sukham va guna karma sangat. Astaya tattan yada yungta natash. Chakshus matanda ivaniya mana. Isha abhatrishtam. Created or given by the Lord. He, certainly. Avarundmahe. We have to accept. Anga. My dear Priyavrata. Dukkam. Distress. Sukham, happiness. Va, or. Guna karma, with quality and work. Sangat, by association. Astaya, being situated in. Tat tat, that condition. Yat, which body. Ayunkta, he gave. Nataha, the Supreme Lord. Chakshushmata. By a person having eyes. Andaha. Blind men. Eva. Like. Niyamanaha. Being conducted. Translation. So this is still Lord Brahma speaking to Priyavrata. My dear Priyavrata, according to our association with different modes of material nature, the Supreme Personality of Godhead gives us our specific bodies and the happiness and distress we achieve. One must therefore remain situated as he is and be conducted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, exactly as a blind man is led by a person who has eyes which, with which to see. Purport. By material means, 
one cannot avoid the happiness and distress unique to his particular body. There are 8,400,000 bodily forms, each destined to enjoy and suffer a certain amount of happiness and distress. This we cannot change, for the happiness and distress are ordained by the Supreme Personality of Godhead in accordance with whose decision we have received our bodies. Since we cannot avoid the plan of the Supreme Godhead, we must agree to be directed by Him, just as a blind man is led by a person who has eyes. Under any circumstances, if we remain in the condition allotted to us by the Supreme Lord and follow His instructions, we will become perfect. The main purpose of life is to follow the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is such instructions that constitute one's religion or occupational duty. In the Bhagavad Gita, therefore, Lord Krishna says, Sarva dharman paritya mam ekang sharanam vraja. Give up all other engagements. Simply surrender unto me and follow me. Bhagavad Gita 1866. This process of surrendering by following the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is not meant for any particular caste or creed. A Brahmin can surrender and so can a Kshatriya, Vaishya or Shudra. Everyone can adopt this process. As stated in this verse, Chakshush Matandha even Niyamanaha One should follow the Lord the way a blind man follows a person who has eyes. If we follow the Supreme Personality of Godhead by following the directions He gives in the Vedas and the Bhagavad Gita, our lives will be successful. The Lord therefore says, Manmana Bhavamad Bhakto Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru Mamai Vaishyasi Satyam Te Pratijane Priyosime Always think of me, become my devotee, and offer respect and obeisances unto me. Then you will certainly come back home, back to Godhead. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Bhagavad Gita 1865 This instruction is meant for everyone, Brahman, Chatya, Vaishya, or Shudra. If anyone from any division of life surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and follows his instructions, his life will be successful. The previous verse has given the analogy of bulls moving under the direction of the driver of a bullock cart. The bulls being completely, surren the bulls being completely surrendered to the driver remain wherever he wants to place them and eat whatever he wants them to eat. Similarly, being completely surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we should not aspire for happiness or regret distress. We must be satisfied with the position allotted to us by the Lord. We should follow the path of devotional service and not be dissatisfied with the happiness and distress he has given. People in the material modes of passion and ignorance generally cannot understand the plan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead with its 8,400,000 forms of life. But the human form affords one the special privilege to understand this plan, engage in devotional service, and elevate oneself to the highest position of perfection by following the Lord's instructions. The entire world is working under the influence of the modes of material nature, especially ignorance and passion. But if people engage in hearing and chanting about the glories of the Supreme Lord, their lives can be successful, and they can be elevated to the highest perfection. In the Brihannaradiya Puran, therefore it is said, we can all chant together, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalau Nasjeva, Nasjeva, Nasjeva Gatadanita. In this age of Kali, there is no other way, no other way, no other way for spiritual perfection than the holy name, the holy name, the holy name of the Lord. Everyone should be given the chance to hear the holy names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For thus, for thus one will gradually come to understand one's real position in life and be elevated to the transcendental position above the mode of goodness. Thus all impediments to his progress will be cut to pieces. In conclusion, therefore, we must be satisfied in whatever position we have been put into by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we should try to engage ourselves in his devotional service. Then our lives will be successful. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Salakaya Chakshu unmiratam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri the Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. So, as I was reading this purport in, preference, in, in preparation for the class, I thought of Narada's instructions in the first canto he gives to Vyasadeva. The whole 
dynamic is that Va- Vyasadeva has written all these literatures. He's written the other Puranas. He's written the Vedanta Sutra. He's written the Mahabharata. Uh, and yet he's not satisfied. And so in his anxiety, uh, Narada Muni, who's tuned in to his disciple, he appears. And uh, he starts chastising him. <laughs> and it's pretty amazing because he's written, you know, the other Puranas include the Padma Purana which we quote from all the time. There's a lot in there about bhakti. Um, but more or less he says, it's, it's, it's uh, very condemned, jugupsitam. Remember the word jugupsitam? There's a verse. Jugupsitam, uh, what you've done. Nayadvachas chitta padang hare yasho jagat pavitram bhaganita karachit. The first, uh, this first verse that he gives him in his main instructions, he says, any, any literature may be very beautifully composed, poetry or novels or any language, but if it doesn't contain glorification of the Supreme Lord, then it's just like a pilgrimage for crows. It's a polite way of saying it's a garbage heap. you know. And on the other hand, literature that's not so nicely composed, every, every verse, it's literally every verse can be imperfectly composed, but it does glorify the Lord. Such literature, literature is heard, chanted, and accepted by the great sages. So, the, so he goes on, and then he gives two, two verses that are very pertinent, pertinent to this uh, whole argument here. You may remember this. He says, Chak vasva dharmam chadanam bhujang hare bhajana bhakvo tapate tato yadi yatra kava bhadrama buddha mushikim if someone, and, I, and, and I, always, I always think of someone joining the Hare Krishna ashram, you know, Brahmacharya ashram, when is, he gives up his swadharma. That's exactly what's being talked about here. The swadharma as a Brahman, a Chatriya, Vaishya Shudra, in the, in the social duties that you have. He gives that up. Chakva swadharma, bhajadam. And he starts worshipping the lotus feet of Krishna full time. In other words, he joins the Hare Krishnas. And he quit his job and joined the Hare Krishnas. Uh, but then after some time, he falls away. Uh, and then he, he, if, if he falls away, where is there anything inauspicious for him? Because he's already put a certain amount of credit into the spiritual bank account. This is said in several places in the Bhagavad Gita. In this, in this endeavor, there's no loss of diminution. And then in the sixth chapter, where Arjuna says, well, I don't think I can pra- practice this dhyana yoga. It's more difficult than controlling the wind, trying to control the mind. And so uh, Krishna encourages him, yes, it's difficult, but by practice, you know, you can achieve. So Arjuna says, okay, well, what if I don't achieve? What, what if I uh, fail in going back to God and achieving perfection? Uh, I'll be like a riven cloud. I'll get, I have given up my material side. I've failed on my spiritual side, so I've got no standing. So Krishna says, no, no, don't worry. In the next life, you'll be born in a wealthy family or a family of Brahmins or even better, in a family of yogis, meaning bhakti yogis, and you'll continue. In other words, nothing is lost. So, now that, that's more or less what got Priyavrata going, right? <laughs> Priya, Priyavrata, his, his teacher is Narada Muni, and he's given up any involvement. Of course, he wasn't needed at first. But now Uttanapada is gone. He's needed very much. So, so the same Narada Muni is here. But it's just the opposite idea. He's given it up. And he's chanting Hare Krishna on the mountain and you know, doing full-time bhajan. Uh, but uh, his father comes, Vayambhuvamana, and says, We need you to manage, to take over. You, know, you have to come out, down off the mountain. And he doesn't want to do it. He says, no, no, that's such an entanglement. Just like we find throughout the Bhagavatam. Bharat, he couldn't wait. He didn't want to wait till they got old. Usually they wait and they retire. You know, he, he, he retired as a young man. Of course, he got in some trouble, but still he you know, did that. And then Prickett, he, he accepted the curse and left the kingdom. And uh, so many kings uh, have done that. So... Uh, he's following Narada Muni's instructions. What is there any loss, even if I don't succeed in this lifetime? But here we have the other side of it, and that is that the order of the Lord is paramount. The, the assumption is Narada Muni is, is giving instructions to uh, Vyasadeva, he's giving instructions to Priyavrata. 
And that's really what Krishna wants him to do. Right? Krishna wants you to become full-time bhakta. Yeah. But in this, in this particular case, because Lord Brahma has come down, and all of his preaching up to this point is that, look, everybody's got to follow the order of the Lord. You know, just like a bull with its, uh, its nose, you know, with a nose ring, and got the, 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 the uh, rope tied to that. Uh, that's, that's the, we're, all, we're all in the thrall of the Lord's orders. Now, now one thing I was reading there is, as, as we read that first verse about the, uh, the orders, and I was thinking, well, isn't like the whole material world full of people who aren't following the orders of the Lord? In other words, that's why we're here. So how can you say we have to follow the orders? But really what is meant there is the will. Even though we're not, we're not, most people in this world are certainly not surrendering to Krishna. They're following their own minds and everything. But in doing so, that's also under the will of the Lord. Because the whole material energy is being conducted by Krishna. We th this is the whole disease. We think we're independent. We're, we're completely dependent at every moment. And because we're violating Krishna's laws, therefore we're suffering. Is it probably always give the example of the criminal. You're, the, the, the nice citizens, they're following the, the, the laws, everything is fine. And then if you become a criminal, then you go into that prison house. So the prisoner may say, I don't, I don't care for the laws of you know, the this, this state. I'm going to do whatever I want. But then the police catch you and you have to obey. You go into the, you're forced to obey. It's the same government. Still, uh, you, but now you're under duress. And now you have to follow. So one way or another, we're following. Just like we're following the laws of nature. I mean, it's law. You have to eat. You have to breathe. Right? In other words, these are, you, you can't say, no, I'm not going to breathe today. You know, and you die. So that's what it means by everyone is under the orders of God. You may, you may rebel, but you'll be under another set of orders, you know, more severe uh, uh, in the material world. So our natural position is to work, as it's explained in one purpose at the end, that to, to work uh, uh, according to the Lord's desires. There's one thing that it's his will that's being followed. But the other is that his actual desire is that we serve out of love, we obey, we, we, we act in such a way for his pleasure rather than on our own. That's like the essence of devotional service. Our own false pleasure, our, rea our real interest, self-interest, is in serving him. This verse is also referred to here, as a blind leading the blind. It's there in the, in the verse, and Prabhupada refers to it, that famous verse from Pallad. Some may know, Nate vidu svarta katimi vishnu, durashayaye bahirata manina, here again you have the, the analogy of the, the ropes, the ropes and the, the, the bull or the ropes of the gunas, the three gunas. So people who are, now what's the, it's always the, good to see the context. The first verse Pallad said, this is in one of his famous instructions to his father. He said, that those who have taken a vow to try to enjoy materialistic family life and therefore whose senses are out of control, they can't become Krishna conscious. If that's your mentality, then either on your own or by, by getting good association, you're, you've shut off the, your, your receptivity to higher knowledge because you're completely committed to material life. And that's where we find millions and millions of people. The fortunate few who are, were receptive to, most of the time, Prabhupada's message in his books, received from one of the glorious book distributors or in another way, uh, they are, are, have changed their orientation and understanding that my real self-interest is not serving these senses and serving the mind, but, but becoming Krishna conscious and learning what Krishna wants to do and, and, and wants me to do and for his pleasure. So that's what uh, is happening here. Priyavrata, he's not, you know, it's, it's <laughs> both, posi both positions are auspicious. I mean, he's already... Uh, you know, very far along the way in, in becoming uh, exalted devotee through austerity and, and, and uh, following Narada's instructions, meditating, chanting. But this is a, this, but the, 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 the place where it meets, the, the, the common denominator is what does Krishna want me to do? That's the thing. He's on, on the assumption what Krishna wants me to do, what my guru told me to do, and that is to just be full-time uh, bhajaniya and completely renounced and forget about all of this material stuff. But Brahma is saying, no, no, no. 
in this particular instance, because the universe needs you to manage for the benefit of all these countless people who need to be, you know, uh, sustenance and everything. There needs to be leadership, obviously. So uh, you, will not, you will not be deviating from the basic principle that you're trying to follow of, 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 of um, uh, following the orders of the Lord by giving up, coming down from the mountain and, and taking up this difficult process of managing the universe. And after all, it's temporary. And we see as, as it goes on, he does incredible services. But then in, at the end, he also gives up because there's an heir, there's somebody to take over. So it's a question of responsibility. Just, it's, it's, it reminds me of, you know, devotees who, you know, you read about the glories of Vrindavan and Bhajan, I'd like to do 64 rounds. And uh, you, 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 in the early days, you know, or any days, you leave your position in, in the temple somewhere. Maybe you're a temple commander. That's even harder than the temple president. You don't have the, the uh, <laughs> authority of the temple president, but you're the one who's trying to get everyone to do stuff they don't want to do. So we've had many temple commanders over the years in the history of this kind, you know, come and go. But uh, it's a very important position. You know, if you're really surrendered, especially if you're a spiritual master, you know, Prabhupada says, no, this is what I want you to do to stay in the position, you know. Then, then you say, well, okay, well, you know, my assumption is that uh, Krishna wants me to be more absorbed in chanting and hearing. But, that's, but really, the, the bottom line is the spiritual master knows better what Krishna wants, and he's asking me to take this responsible position. And then after some time, yes, you can visit as a pilgrim, and at a certain point you can retire to Vrindavan. Probably, you know, one of the reasons he, he uh, worked so hard to make those places in Vrindavan, Mayapur, so devotees could retire there at the end of life and you know be in the dam. So so this is the uh, it's all important important lesson here is that where, especially when you're part of a, a society like this, who ha which has a very important mission, and that is to preach, and which we've benefited from. How did we become devotees? You know, through Prabhupada's efforts of writing the books, or somebody efforts of distributing the books, maintaining the temple, the beauty of the deities. All these things requires work, responsible work. You know, regularity, you know, not frivolous. Uh, that's enabling us to be Krishna conscious. So we owe it to the spiritual master, to, to Lord Chaitanya, to, to take our role seriously in pushing on the movement, expanding the movement, and giving the knowledge out. And at the same time, Prabhupada made it such that we have this four and a half hour period, or whatever it is in the morning, where we can do our bhajan. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing else to do at this time, except in emergency cases, the special cases. So, so that, you know, there's a combination. Baba called the Bhagavat Marg and the, and the Pancharatrika Marg, right? The, they're both important. Pancharatrika Marg means all the things that are necessary to maintain a temple from, you know, dressing the deities and cooking and cleaning and collecting funds and all these things. Sometimes it seems like, uh, I, you know, I don't have time to do my bhajan. Uh, this is distracting to me. Now I've got to deal with these 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 uh, officials of the of the um, city government to get the permits to do the rata yatra. This is all seems mundane, but it's not mundane. It's this, it's 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 just like we're seeing here, for the sake of the larger principle. In this case, maintaining the universe so life can go on and a certain number of uh, living entities can go back to Godhead. Uh, one has to sometimes allay his personal desires for bhajan or go on, you know, I want, to, I want to go around the world and visit all the temples. This is what I think will really enliven me. And it probably would. But what about your duty, you know, that, that just at the present temple? Or what about, you know, plugging into the Sankraton movement more responsibly? Uh, so that, so it, it's an important lesson, and Prabhupada is uh, emphasizing it. And there's one verse that keeps c coming up, but it's never actually chanted. And I, went, I, I picked it out. Uh, yeah, 18, Bhagavad Gita 1846. Uh, yena midam sidim manava. Krishna is the source of all beings and he is all pervading. By worshipping him through the performance of one's own work, one can attain perfection in this way. This is a very important principle because how many, you know, I mean, let's, let's be realistic. Uh, just in the, you see the, the society itself that's developed over the years, this kind of society. I mean, my, in my day, to join the higher Christians meant you moved into the temple. 
you know. It just wasn't that much of a congregation. The congregation was often people who once lived in the temple and then they couldn't quite hack it and they live you know, outside but they're still interested and they come and visit on Sundays, you know. Which is fine, but uh, you know, not these thousand. Now the vast majority of initiated devotees are householders. They live outside. You have to look to India, if you see. You know, that's like a, a huge percentage of the of the uh, society, and some very very sincere devotees, doing you know, maintaining the household, working like anything. There was it was a couple who came here. The man was, I think, studying in some computer thing here that was. You know, the best place to, to find it in, in, in the world. I forget what it was. And the lady was with him. His wife was with him. I don't know if any of the kids, I think they have a very small kid. And so they would come to my class, the evening class. You know, and this was back in early 90s. And, uh, you know, we made friends. I made a nice relationship. But then eventually they went back to Mumbai and uh, continued on there. I would visit them whenever I went to India. I was in that part of the country. And there was also a, a grandfather I met. And uh, so actually I saw the, the little girl grow up. And now there's a huge part of the Mirror Road Temple. There's a, there was a new temple in Bombay that was open maybe 10 years ago, you know. And uh, the deity is Arata Giridhari. So <laughs> a special attraction there. So I got to see, and there, there were incredible preaching, incredible preaching. The mother, she has, she has all these kids, and they're, she's training them of all ages, you know, and, and giving them all kinds of projects and, and plays and, and classes. And the daughter has grown up to be also a dynamic preacher. She's like, like 20 or something. She's not married, and she's doing amazing stuff, you know. And so they're, but they're, the father works, and they're maintaining, you know, and they're just, and so the, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful to see. And there's many, many devotees like that. So it reminds me of this situation. Priyavrata is going to have a time now when he's, you know, he's got to do all this stuff to manage the universe. It's hard to imagine. But at the same time, as he's been encouraged by Lord Brahma, he'll be able to uh, remember Krishna and realize, you know, and have the, the basic principle, this is what Krishna wants me to do. And I'm following it. And therefore, Krishna will give him so much mercy from inside his heart. Right? He'll be, be directed. What's that verse? We all know. Sarabhasyacaham vridisan nevishto mataks matiyagyanam apohanamcha. So, Krishna is within everyone's heart. Uh, 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 and from him come knowledge, remembrance, and also forgetfulness. I always point out how, how that forgetfulness is such a mercy. You know, just think. We know he had a last life, right? Many lives. Now just think what it would be like to try to remember that. Remember how you got sick and died like 30,000 times. And all the people who were, you know, tormenting you. And that nice body of a dog and a cat, you know. You think you'd be able to be, do your peaceful job right now, you know, with all those memories? I mean, even in this one lifetime, if you go through some traumatic thing, it often stays your whole life. I, I, I saw a news story where... There, in the uh, in the in the last since since the uh, Afghanistan war began, and the Iraqi war, thirty thousand um, of the veterans who were in combat in America have committed suicide because of what they went through in the war. And that's a lot, and they're still committing suicide today. You know that the trauma of being there, and there's something called moral injury, what they w had to do. You know, we just shot up this town or something, and there's like 30 kids and mothers, you know, killed. And we were responsible. Can you imagine what that would do to you? We don't even want to step on an ant. So this is, this is what our past is, you know, bef without Krishna consciousness, so much in horror. So Krishna gives us forgetfulness. But also, if you want to, to approach him, he gives you the intelligence. Oh, this person is sincere, so let him go this way instead of that way. You know, let him, let him say yes when the book distributor says, you know, would you like to take a book? All right, it looks like it'd be interesting. Rather than, I don't have time. You know, one or the other of those two responses can change your whole life, right? Change your whole destiny. So, Krishna's helping from within, and he's guiding, and sometimes he comes from without, either as his representative, as, as Lord Brahma here, 
to to really uh, make it clear exactly what he wants at a certain time for us to do in our devotional service. So that that happens also very much in a, a society like this. You know, we're chanting our rounds, and then the temple commander says, "Hey, you, you're on the pots tonight, buddy." You know, but I'm absorbed in chanting. Hey, your service right now is to do the pots, and you'll see your rounds will be better. <laughs> It's, a, it's a, a, a small case of what we what we see going on here. So, any comments or questions? It's very practical instruction here from this portion of the Bhagavatam. Boy, electronics. <laughs> that one also is it working? That's the one you took from me before that wasn't working. Well, Hare, like it's Hare Krishna. I think it's working. All right. Yeah, I was just thinking about in relation to uh, forgetfulness that Krishna, he also helps us forget Maya, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and yes. In other words, that's, that. Uh, I was just reading, you know, a friend of mine, uh, Indra was, believe it or not, Indra Pramod is preaching on the internet now. He's got a whole thing going. And so he wanted uh, some verses that that give a progression of, of uh, how, c- how you can tell someone is progressing in devotional service. So immediately what came to mind is so many times Prabhupada said, and it's in the book so many, that if your, dis- if your attraction to Maya is waning and your attraction to Krishna is increasing, then you're doing, s- you're doing the right thing. In other words, that's a measure of, of advancement. And, and where, how is that taking place? You know? Well, you are chanting Hare Krishna, chanting Hare Krishna. You're absorbing the mind in Krishna to some degree, or our mind is also wandering, but you're getting attracted. Because, because I, just, I just learned this first. Maybe some of you know it. The explanation of what the name Krishna means, Krishna bhu vachika shabdo nascha nirvati vachika tayar aikyam yeah, tayar, tayar, tayar aikyam param brahma krishna yachabhidiyate the word Krish, just that syllable is actually a word. Krish is the uh, attractive feature. Is they're all attractive. That's the attraction. And the nash, the na, is the uh, the bliss. That's the, that's the spiritual pleasure. You put it all. You put them both together, and you get Krishna, the Param Brahma, the supreme absolute truth. There's also one for Rama, which I won't give you. <laughs> Real sweet. Shiva says. So. And, and uh, you know, understanding this, this basic fact, which is inconceivable, that the name Krishna, that sound Krishna, is wholly identical with Krishna. That's something that's just like inconceivable. But we're operating on that assumption, and we're experiencing it. To, to whatever degree we're actually hearing and chanting with, from the heart and abs- being absorbed, then we're being attracted by Krishna. Then we're experiencing Krishna himself. Y- himself. And that's how we go off from day to day. Because Krishna is attracting us to him and the material attraction is waning. You know? Now, of course, th- this goes back to the other question that, w- that w- came up in, in the course of this, uh, these few verses. Is that, um, uh, what w- that we have a certain amount of free will. In other words, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm born in a Brahmin family. You know? But I got free will. I can turn into a rascal and a rogue and a shuja, you know. And and wha- the way that's often expressed is that hey, I'm a Brahmin born in the Brahmin family. I can ward- lord it over these other cl- castes, you know, and really cash in on my Brahmanhood. That's nothing Brahminical about that. That's like <laughs> demonic, <laughs> right? So so we have free will. The the to, to the, the gunas and the karmas can change, and that's the whole principle of devotional service. Prabhupada had great faith in the holy name. If they just chant, I'm going to go, you know, to Tompkins Square and just chant for three hours, you know, with my, my few enthusiasts here, you know. And uh, I know that it's going, to, it's going to have a great effect. And it did. You know, people were attracted, you know, this is the latest thing, let me just check it out. Whatever reason, they, le- they heard the holy name. And for a certain number of them, they in- intrigued them. It, it, it struck a chord. And they came back to the, to the, to the, uh, uh, the uh, storefront. You know, and, and, and they beca- many became devotees. They become devotees like that. So that pure chanting is, of course, very, very powerful. But even our impure chanting, 
if we're doing it regularly under instruction, we're trying to concentrate, trying to improve, that will, will be attracted to Krishna and our attraction for Maya will wane. And that's, a, that, that's essential, that vairagya aspect. What is that? So, uh, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Priyojitaha Janayat Yashu Vairagyam Gyanam Chayirahoitakam. By serving Vasudeva, beginning with hear his, hearing his name, uh, very quickly one develops detachment, vairagya, and knowledge. This is going on. So, that's, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the principle that uh, is, is universal in devotional service. What was the original question? I was just making the comment uh, of uh, that oh, Krish- forgetting Krishna Maya. will help yes, us forget yes. Maya. Forgetting Maya or seeing, seeing Maya uh, in a different way, seeing it as Krishna's energy rather than something that you want to enjoy. Yeah, not falling victim to the bewilderment of Maya. Yeah, on the, on the other side of the coin in relation to this pastime, I've, I've heard um, devotees mention, I'm not exactly sure where it, where it's where it's come from, I'm sure you probably heard it too. But there's a saying that, oh well, you have to follow all the instructions of your guru. Like you have to follow all of them. But in the case of your guru advising you to get married, you don't have to follow that. That's your. Have you heard that before? I've heard that a number of times. And vaguely, I remember, but I'm, I I wouldn't swear to it. Have you heard that, Vijay Prabhu? Yeah. Oh, Bhishma. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He the refused. reference is to Bhishma, Dave. So how, do, how, how to kind of understand that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's ever going to happen to devotees here where their guru says, okay, you know, you better get married. And you say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. Well, I know the way it usually happens. The other way around where the, the, the disciple is saying, you know, Guru Dave, you know, is this, uh, anybody, is this Maharaji, uh, you know, okay, maybe you should get married. You know, uh, you know. In other words, there's an inst- the institution is there, so that there's a, there's a, there's a, a way in which you can have a, a proper marriage within the confines. You know, that's still bona fide. That's what's going on here. You know, uh, so this is not uh, 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 pre- so priya is a brahmachari now. Obviously, that's part of what you know they want to do. I mean. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't know if there's any case I can remember. I mean, someone may dig it up, you know, where Prabhupada ordered someone to get married who wasn't really inclined to being married, who didn't show symptoms of needing to be married. You, you know, usually the question is, it's either marriage or I'm going to bloop, you know. Well, okay, you know, of course we get marriage. We have, you know, but, but you, have to be, you have to follow the principles and do it in a certain, right, certain way like that. So that's, you know... Uh, I, I never encountered that, and I don't remember see, seeing it, but it certainly, um, yeah, it's exceptional, very exceptional. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Ari Kesh told Madhavendra to get married? <laughs> but he didn't get married, right? I'll, say it, I'll just say <laughs> it in the mic, but Hari Kesh, Hari Kesh he told. Because he was a spiritual, he was a spiritual master, Madhavendrapuri, the scientist, oh, okay. to get married. Yeah. And Madhavendrapuri, you know, he did. He did it. He got married. Oh, he did get married. <laughs> and he said that uh, in the marriage, he said that he was so like um, not like fit as a as a husband, yeah, right. you know, because you know he was just like he was like cha- means he wasn't paying proper attention to her or to the household, you know, things. Yeah. He was just you know. Up reading the Chaitanya. Yeah, I think chart. I remember that era yeah. with him. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually it just split. He didn't work, and then he went back to as a brahmachari. But anyways, <laughs> it's I'm going to take the fifth. I don't know if you know what that means, but <laughs> <laughs> all right, state thirty-five. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo. Okay.